we have Janet King. I'm so excited. She's she's amazing. We're all amazing, but Janet, I'm, I'm excited for this. So Janet King, she joined us for the 2020 residency. She is a 60 plus Native American woman from the Lumbee tribe in North Carolina. She is a mother of an adult child and has worked at the Native American Health Center for the past 24 years. Her entire working career has been dedicated to nonprofit agencies, most of them Native American. She advocates for systemic changes uh, so people of color and LGBTQ communities have culturally responsive care and healthy communities. So her life work is very aligned with what Cynthia has built with place. And so without further ado, let's have Janet King come to the stage. Okay, can everybody hear me? Okay, good. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Aran, for that uh, introduction. And I just want to say hello, relatives, um, all of you who are listening. And also, I have some relatives that uh, tuned in, two sisters and two daughters. Um, they're not blood daughters and sisters, but they became sisters and daughters because we chose each other. And um, I'm very grateful to have them here listening to me today. Um, I also want to acknowledge that we're in the land of Hu Chin. And Hu Chin is the name that the Ohlone people had for this area before the colonizers uh, renamed it the uh, San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, I just wanna say thank you to PLACE, um, to Cynthia and, and Iran. I, I feel like uh, even though I'm probably older than both of you, he really reparented me. And uh, one thing that was a great gift to me by PLACE is just being noticed. I mean, sometimes I'll do something that nobody noticed when I was a kid, but Cynthia noticed it and would say something about it. And I was like, wow, you, you notice me, you see me? so. So I went through a process of being reparented um, by going through place. So I'd like to start out my artist statement by talking about turtles. I've always liked turtles and always been fascinated by them and attracted to them. So the sea turtle is the one I want to talk about. Um, so the sea turtle, when the woman, the well, the female sea turtle is going to have her, the next generation, when she's going to lay her eggs, she... Uh, does something that really intrigued me. She swims out of the ocean at her natural habitat. She swims ashore and she digs out a sandy pit and then she lays all her eggs and then she covers them all up and then she swims away. Um, the story fascinated me when I when I uh, saw it because it's, it's kind of like, bye, you're on your own. And uh, the story really resonated with me. I felt like it described my upbringing and it described my mother's upbringing. My mother told me stories that the only quality time she had with her mother was a few minutes while my grandmother was cooking. Uh, she would share a few words with my mom. My, sister, uh, my mother said that my grandmother would return to work in the fields even after the, same, that even after the day after she had a baby, she would turn, return to the fields. And for those of you who have birthed children, going back to work the next day is not something you feel like doing. My mother being the oldest girl that my grandmother birthed was the one to care for her siblings, her younger siblings while my grandmother worked. So by your on your own was a pattern in my mother's childhood as well. In total, my grandmother birthed nine children. My mother's story is very similar. She birthed seven children. My two older sisters were the mothers in my family while my mother worked. And here they are on um, this picture, you know, Lavetta's the one holding my hand. I'm the youngest one. And my sister Kathy is holding Lavetta's hand. We had to be quiet when we played so my mother who worked nights could get some rest. There were some very distressful moments for my oldest sister who had the responsibility to keep us safe while my mother was gone. That still haunt her today. So by your on your own was an especially stressful event for my oldest sister. When I became a mother, I vowed not to repeat this pattern, but circumstances did create it at times in my life. My daughter fared a lot better than I did in my mother's uh, siblings uh, when she was born. She got more of my attention than the former two uh, previous generations of children from their mothers. We had bedtime rituals of, of storytelling. There was a, a summer though, when she was a teenager and able to be home alone that she she was home alone while I worked. I would rush home on lunch break, bring her food, and buy here on your own, would take over until I got home from work. This is a summer I wish that I could change. In the center of my art piece um, is a, 
a lumbee cabin. And, um, and I think, yeah, so this is an old picture of a lumbee cabin and I made a replica of it. So in my story, in my art piece though, the lumbee cabin is a, a time machine. It's a time machine to take us back to the old culture before the colonizers came and replaced our kind, loving culture with a violet by your own, by your on your own culture that we've endured. The old culture revered women as life givers and leaving children to chance to be raised by their by other children was not would never have been permitted. The development developmental stages of children would be honored and not rushed. Children could ease into adulthood and not be rushed as it happened to my sisters. So in this lumpy cabin, I think if you can advance the picture. Okay, so here's my replica of a lumpy cabin. I made it out of sticks. <laughs> and so in the lumpy cabin, the time machine, there's two pictures. One's a black and white picture of me and my older sisters uh, representing the past. And there's another picture of me and my younger sisters, a colored picture uh, representing the future. And the picture of my older sisters, that was the only one I could find. There was one I wanted to find to put in the lumpy cabin, the time machine, but I couldn't find it. And not being able to find it kind of became metaphoric of my whole process of doing my art. You know, finding the the past was really hard. It was it was it was hard to find the way we were before the colonizers came. And the reason why I like that picture of my sisters, the one that I couldn't find, is that they were laughing and playing, and they were being children and not being uh, not being parents. So, so, uh, so that became another uh, metaphor for the story. It was it's like the colonizer's pattern of robbing yourself, robbing the people that you're subjugating of their own memories of themselves. So, uh, so to answer the question. Uh, if I had a place of my own, what would it be like? It would be a place where we can be ourselves and not a colonized version of who we were. The old culture is revitalized and women can do more than just birth their babies. They get to raise them and spend time with them. Village life, village life is centered around caring for this next generation and not working to death to make a colonizer rich. It is a place of rest where you can fully rest before you go back to work the next day. It is a place of self-care that is an established daily ritual and not something you get to do once in a while on a vacation. Women are safe from rape, from misogyny, from patriarchy, from toxic masculinity and other colonizer patterns. Children get to be children. It is a place where we get to live in harmony with our plant relatives, our animal relatives, our earth mother, our cosmic relatives. It is a place where by your own, your own is no longer a practice. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Um, so this, this is Janet's first art piece and that's a really big deal because um, it's my personal belief that we all have artists inside, uh, but if you don't choose to let that artist out, then you're not an artist, right? So it does take vulnerability and courage to tell yourself, I'm gonna, I'm gonna translate a vision I have and put it out there tangibly. And to do that, to say yes to yourself and say, I need the world to see and hear this, that's really magical. And the fact that she was able to make this beautiful piece at her, at, at her first try, that's tremendous. So I want to congratulate you, Janet, on creating this beautiful piece. And thank you for speaking today. Thank you. Yay.